On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, it looks like the Model 3 might have a number of interesting changes coming into production very soon. Plus, Tesla's biggest supercharger in the United States so far is now under construction. Elon Musk squashes any hope for a Tesla smartwatch app and more. What's happening, friends? Alongside Daisy the Boxer, I'm Ryan McCaffrey. This is episode 268 of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast for September 20th, 2020, a.k.a. my 40th birthday. I'm looking forward to a fun weekend with the family uh, just here, you know, doing a Zoom call with the extended family since we can't physically get together. But I'm hoping to have a uh, very fun time. I appreciate all the well wishes that a number of you have already sent me. I sincerely appreciate it. And yeah, it's weird. 40 does not feel like a, it doesn't feel like I should be 40, but I feel good, so I can't complain about that. Anyway, there is plenty to talk about in the world of Tesla this week, so let me get started. First up, the Model 3 might be about to get some, well, mostly under the hood upgrades, once again coming out of Giga Shanghai first. So this, let me stress, this is not yet confirmed Looking pretty good, though, uh, so we'll see as, as the weeks go on if this indeed gets confirmed, but I think this is probably a lot more likely than not. So this was reported by Tesla Mania on Twitter. That Tesla account, for proper credit, is Tesla double underscore Mania on Twitter. Again, compiling reports from the Chinese media and sharing them in English here on Twitter in the U.S., and the rumors are that the Made in China Model 3s will very soon be equipped with the following seven new things. First, a new steering wheel. Second, what's described as Center Console 2.0. Third, new headlights and taillights. Fourth, a power lift trunk. Fifth, chrome delete. Sixth, the octo valve. And seventh, and finally, double layer glass for better noise isolation. So again, I do believe this, uh, though I am unable to add any additional corroboration to this report, but I'm going to go ahead and go with this. I feel pretty good about it. My, my journalistic instincts tell me this is probably looking good based on the fact that it's been sourced from Chinese, from actual Chinese media, not just rumors and blogs and things. So uh, assuming it is indeed correct, I thought, let me go through these one by one and let's just talk about them. So first, the new steering wheel. Now that would be the one thing in the car I never would have guessed that they would mess with at all. I mean, if you told me that the Model 3 was upgrading seven parts, I don't think I would guess steering wheel in a hundred guesses. I mean, I'm not sure what a new steering wheel would be. I mean, the, the Model 3 slash Model Y steering wheel, I think it already looks pretty sporty. It feels good. It's wrapped in vegan leather now. So it's it was the last of the animal products in the car to be removed. And it has since been removed. In fact, that was a good, that must have been at least a year ago now. But it looks good, feels good, uh, looks sporty. So... And, the, and also the buttons on it and the scroll wheels work great. I don't certainly don't have any complaint about them using them just about every day, uh, you know, whenever I take the car out, which I guess isn't every day at this point. But anyway, I'm sure there's always room for improvement in any part, steering wheel included, but I'm just really eager to see what this is. Now, the good news is that if it's some awesome new steering wheel that's just a lot cooler or has some sort of new functionality, you will almost certainly be able to pay if you want to upgrade to it if you really want it, because it's just a steering wheel. It should pop right on. Uh, well, an all, your current one will pop off. A new one should pop right on, barring any kind of wiring difference. So there's one. Second, center console 2.0, which again, even that person reporting on this isn't quite sure about. And to be totally honest, I'm not either. So 
The fact is, as you know, Tesla just revised the center console. Right now we're on center console, I guess it would be fair to call it 1.1, maybe 1.2, I'm not sure, because we uh, just recently got the USB-C ports as well as the wireless charging pad. So in any revision of the center console, what I would like to see, I've, I've railed about this many, many times since I took delivery of my car two, two, yeah, just over two years ago now, is that hopefully any new center console would finally get rid of that glossy piano black finish that's so super prone to both fingerprints and scratches. So uh, it would just it would be interesting if it is indeed a new center console since they just revised it what six months ago for the Model Y and it has since made its way into the Model Three. Now I wouldn't put it past Tesla at all to make multiple revisions that quickly. Uh, and the fact is, whatever this is, it will also most likely come to the Model Y at the same time or shortly after, because that's what these two vehicles are designed to do, share a lot of the same parts to reduce costs. The other, nec the other next item on the list, new headlights and taillights. Now, this one has basically already happened, at least with regard to the taillights on the Model Y. Uh, I talked about that just a few shows ago. Now, the three and the Y share headlights and taillights. There was a photo that went around on social media recently in the, a couple of the Tesla blogs of a revised Model 3 slash Model Y headlight. And it had, it was the same shape, but it had an LED, a new LED up higher in the light cluster, closer to the side of the car as far as where its location is in the headlight cluster. Now, the nice part, again, the Model 3 and Y headlights are already pretty well regarded. I mean, they illuminate the road fairly well. They've been given, I think it was, cons it was either the Consumer Reports or it might have actually been the U.S. government that gave the Model 3 headlight a pretty good evaluation as far as safety and, and uh, brightness goes for, of course, nighttime driving, obviously. So... Uh, any improvement, great. That would be fantastic if they're going to make it even better. And again here, if you really wanted to, you can probably upgrade to whatever the new headlights and taillights would be. The power lift trunk. Now, we'd also heard about this one as well. Elon had tweeted to a Tesla owner in China not too long ago who had requested a power lift gate on his Model 3 to use with his wheelchair to assist with getting that, uh, getting in and out of the, the trunk uh, with, with the wheelchair. And Elon had responded, responded to that tweeting, quote, Tesla will add a power lift gate at no cost. So it seems that Tesla might have had that feature already in the works. And now here it comes for all the cars, seemingly, which is great to see. It's nice to see everybody get that if indeed that's what's gonna happen. Now, in theory, again, you could upgrade to this one, most especially because Elon appeared to offer that exact thing, an upgrade, a free upgrade to that particular Tesla owner in China. It would no doubt require some wiring in addition to a new, uh, it would need a lift motor and struts. But the fact of the matter is, a number of owners already of the Model 3 have already done this with aftermarket kits. So this is definitely possible as a retrofit. Will Tesla offer it themselves? Maybe, maybe not. Probably a 50-50 coin toss. I would lean towards no, but it's, it's definitely possible. And if not, you could probably get the parts from Tesla and you could probably do it yourself or you know just use the, one of the aftermarket kits. Then we come to Chrome Delete. Not too much to say about this one. We've heard about that already. I talked about that three shows back, and I'm doing my own aftermarket upgrade on the Chrome Delete. I don't know if you'd, well, I guess it's not necessarily an upgrade. It's a, an aftermarket style change. Let's call it that way. I've got that appointment coming up in a couple of weeks, but it appears that the again, as we'd previously heard, the Chrome Delete, the or just let's call it what it is, the black window trim, window and mirror trim, 
uh, might be coming to the Model 3. And then finally, or excuse me, not quite finally, two more, the Octo Valve. The Octo Valve, yes, we've all been expecting and really actually hoping this would come to the Model 3 since the Model Y's debut. And having it come to the Model 3, of course, makes perfect sense. The Octo Valve is more efficient uh, in the winter time in particular than the Model 3's set up in that regard. And it would, as such, help maintain the Model 3's range better in winter weather, in, in those cold temperatures. Now, the only interesting thing about this is that just a few months ago, Elon had said on a podcast when asked about this that they have, and I'm paraphrasing here, but I'm pretty sure I've got it pretty dead on. He said they have bigger fish to fry and that it didn't seem to be on Tesla's radar as a thing to upgrade in the Model 3. But I suppose, thinking through that more now, actually, that podcast interview was six, seven, maybe even eight months ago. It was, it was a good bit of time. And in fact, six, seven, eight months, that's an eternity in Tesla time. So I guess they have come around on that and the, the plan is moving forward. So I say bring on the Octo Valve. Now, sadly, this one, you will not be able to do an upgrade to on your existing Model 3. And finally, the last of these seven items, the double layer glass for better noise isolation. Well, I'll tell you, I guess I played Charlie from Columbia, South Carolina's call one week too soon when we heard from Charlie last week. Uh, Charlie, this one should make you happy, and I'm sure it will make plenty of other ha uh, people happy as well. Elon had responded to somebody on Twitter recently about this. The person was complaining about people outside of the car being able to hear his speakerphone Bluetooth phone calls that were happening inside the car. And Elon responded to that saying they were working on a better noise insulation. So it looks like this should most definitely help address that. But of course, the uh, equal or even perhaps better side effect is that it would help keep the in-car ride overall a bit quieter. Now, and in theory, in theory, you could upgrade to this. Maybe, you know, if, if you were to accidentally drop a hammer on your roof glass and then need to make a glass claim and get it replaced. Now, <laughs> to be super clear, I am saying that tongue in cheek. Do not do that. That is I'm not at all advising that you purposely break your roof glass should this new double layer glass come to fruition. But it, being serious now, if something did happen to your glass, uh, when if and when this this new glass is available, then yes, it is you might get upgraded to that that uh, new glass. I guess it'll kind of depend on the part supply. I mean, I, I would think there's no reason why Tesla wouldn't just phase out their existing glass uh, in their in their parts supply chain and move entirely to the improved glass, both for obviously new build cars, but also for, for glass replacements. So we'll see about that. All in all, for these seven things, if, if all of them or even just most of them are real, then I'll tell you this, these are some really nice, they're little things, but collectively they all add up to some really nice quality of life improvements for the Model 3, which I would bet the farm would be sure to find their way into the Fremont-built Model 3s sooner rather than later. That's been the pattern that we've seen so far in the other one or two instances where Shanghai uh, has made a change, Giga Shanghai, and it has found its way to Fremont uh, not too long after that. And the thing is, too, Tesla has never stood still. And really, the Model 3 has stayed pretty much unchanged, at least to the end user. You know, I'm sure there, there are always with Tesla a lot of little things that you mostly can't see or even realize that are there. Uh, but but this would be a, a pretty nice, comprehensive series of quality of life upgrades. And uh, yeah, it does seem like the Model 3 is almost kind of due because it's been on the market for over three years now. And it's 
Tesla is just not a company that stands still. So we will see if these get confirmed pretty soon. Next up this week, uh, in fact, I want to flash back to last week. Brian from Juneau, Alaska had called in wondering about, boy, the callers were all very prescient last week. It turns out Brian from Juneau, Alaska called in last week wondering about Elon's early 2018 tweet about doing a Tesla supercharger slash drive-in slash rock and roll roller skate restaurant. Well, this week, another Brian in the Ride the Lightning community, this was, his uh, Twitter handle is at Brian Mac SC, and it's B-R-Y-A-N-M-A-C-K-S-C. Brian Mack uh, may have found it, may have found the supercharger drive-in restaurant. Uh, with some help, I might add from Marco from Montreal, who's at Marco RP. Now, both of those wonderful folks follow me, so hello to both of you if you happen to be listening to this. Hat tip as well to Niall and my friends at the East Bay Tesla Owners Club for flagging this story to me. This is very interesting. Now, Brian posted pictures of the supercharger site. This, this supercharger that's under construction now, it's located just off of Interstate 5 in Firebaugh, California. And I, I was certainly not familiar with that town. I had to look it up. It's about halfway between the Gustine and Kettleman City supercharger. So uh, closer to San Francisco than Los Angeles, but not by much. Like Kettleman's kind of about in the middle. And then uh, you've got Fireball a little north of Kettleman and south of Gustine. Now, Kettleman, of course, as most of you, if you haven't been there, you're probably at least familiar with it. Kettleman City is the current king of Tesla supercharger stations in the entire world because of not only its 40 charging stations, 40 stalls with half of them being V3s that they were upgraded last holiday season, uh, but it's also the one and only Tesla supercharger to have a passcode locked lounge that you can enjoy while you charge that only Tesla owners can access because the entry code for the door pops up on the supercharger, uh, on the map in the car, in your, in your car UI as you're approaching it. You know, the, your non-Tesla owners don't know what the passcode is. So it's this cool Tesla owners only thing uh, with with a nice quiet lounge and a barista and a there's even a little merch merch stand there. I've got a Kettleman City T-shirt that I wear a lot. I really enjoy that shirt. It's very comfortable. But this new one in Fireball looks to blow Kettleman and every other supercharger in the world out of the water. This plan in Fireball calls for 56 superchargers, all V3s. But that's not all. The proposal also calls for, quote, adding a new convenience store and restaurant within the interior space of an existing building, as well as, quote, a total of 56 Tesla EV parking spaces, as well as, quote, a total of nine additional EV charging spaces that are not part of Tesla spaces. So maybe this isn't going to be a rock and roll restaurant or a drive-in. Uh, it's just a large parking lot, 56 charging spaces, but it's pretty darn impressive nevertheless. Now, my hope is that this is going to be open in time for holiday travel, because if it's under construction here in mid-September, that gives it a decent chance to be open. And they've got, what, basically two months, two months and some change to get it open for the Thanksgiving, big Thanksgiving travel weekend here in the U.S. And uh, holiday time, if you're not familiar now, this you tend to only see the bottlenecks as of now at holiday times and on the coasts. And particularly in California, we do have a very high, a relatively high concentration of Teslas here versus just about anywhere else. But... Uh, holiday supercharger bottlenecks are a real thing, even at Kettleman City. Even there, uh, la like last Thanksgiving, there were 
or over the Thanksgiving weekend, I mean, there were lines, despite the fact that Kettleman's 40 chargers, there was a, a there was a line of cars waiting to get in there. So you get those peak, uh, those peak holiday travel times and the superchargers, particularly here in California, do get super busy. So what this one would do is, uh, is help both sites because not only is 56 stalls, a ton of V3 stalls in Fireball, but this specific location being the sort of the next one up north from Kettleman means that some people, whether you're coming south or heading north, some people would go to Kettleman and some would, would hit Fireball instead, which would thus ease congestion at both stations. I mean, you're talking about 96 supercharger stalls within easy range of each other, no matter which Tesla model you're driving. Literally, no matter which one. They are, they're pretty close to each other. And 76 of those 96 stalls are V3s. So that'll help move people through a lot more quickly. Great stuff there. I am looking forward to seeing and reading more about Fireball. I am currently not planning to go to Arizona over the holidays due to COVID-19. You know, my parents are, they're not old per se. I wouldn't, I don't think of them as old, but they're not young. And my dad had prostate cancer surgery not long ago. So he's a little bit more at risk. I would never, I would not want to, you know, unknowingly bring, bring the virus down. So I will probably not travel uh, over the holidays this time to Arizona, but should things improve, should things change, and I do take the car down, I definitely want to make a point to stop at this new Fireball location, either either on the way down or on the way back, whichever ends up sort of making the most sense. But yeah, that is going to be a cool one. 56 stalls. Next up this week, some interesting tweets from Elon Musk. I wanted to go through a few of them here. If you have been hoping, I teased this at the top of the show, so... You're, you've, I've already softened the blow a little bit. If you have been hoping for an official Tesla app for your smartwatch, what I'm about to say will disappoint you. Elon responded to a Clean Technica post that had said, Tesla developing smartwatch with partners, news outlets report, which was basically a, a pick, them picking up a story that uh, there was a rumor that at the Apple event this past week, which did focus on the Apple Watch, that Tesla would be on stage or featured somehow with a Tesla smartwatch app. That did not prove to be the case. And even prior to the Apple event, Elon responded to that tweet saying, definitely not. Smartwatches and phones are yesterday's technology. Neuralinks are the future. So... Uh, I don't know how long it'll be before we can do that telepathic summoning of our cars, telepathic locking and unlocking of the cars and what have you, and preconditioning, I assume, would be would be in the list as well. But un- at least in the meantime, it looks like that we can all stop holding out any hope of using your watch as your key for your three or why. Another Elon tweet from this week. Remember the big total rewrite of autopilot that the autopilot team has been working on for a while now? Well, Elon put a timeline on it, tweeting, quote, releasing private beta in two to four weeks, public beta, early access owners who opt in, four to six weeks after that, then all U.S. Tesla owners mid-December. The above schedule is contingent upon not encountering major unexpected setbacks, end quote. Well, Elon was pretty good about putting the necessary caveats on that, but it sounds like they're aiming for this to be a, uh, a holiday gift of sorts for Tesla owners. It, you know, it, I have to say, not to look a gift horse in the mouth here, please do not take that, take what I'm about to say that way, but... And I also don't work in software, so I may just, what I'm about to say may just be wrong, and I welcome uh, any corrections from actual software engineers, but it would seem a bit, shall we say, bold to aim to release a total autopilot rewrite just before the aforementioned busy holiday travel season, or at least the, the, the 
Christmas, the December portion of that. Now, maybe again, because of COVID, maybe it won't be as busy this year, but there are probably still going to be plenty of people out driving. So I hope that means that Tesla is confident in the full autopilot rewrite, that they're going to be able to roll it out smoothly. But pragmatically speaking, and again, I'm not knocking Tesla here, if this full autopilot rewrite deploy ends up slipping to the first of the new year, I would not at all be surprised. Because again, this, maybe this is just coincidence, but I kind of figured that, that ex this exact thing I'm talking about, not doing a major release ahead of a super busy travel time, I kind of figured that that was why the, the big numbered software version releases we've had the, each of the last two years, uh, version nine two years ago and version 10 last year, if you recall, both of those happened in September, which I always took to mean that Tesla wanted to do that on purpose so that they would have time to iron out any major bugs in those releases before that big holiday travel season. Uh, and I guess on that note, while we're talking, there has been zero peep whatsoever about a version 11. So I think uh, if you were thinking about that, I have had a couple of listeners ask me about that. That does seem like it is not a thing this year. It's not to say there will never be a major software update again, but uh, it does seem like for now, that is not the focus. And quite frankly, V10 is great overall. I mean, it's it does a lot of, you know, it seems pretty solid, pretty stable. It does does the job well. So um, uh, no no V11, at least not, not on the September cadence that we've had each of the last two years. So we will see how this autopilot rewrite progresses and when it lands in our cars. For the third and final Elon tweet I wanted to bring up this week, let me preface it by playing a call from Dave in Los Angeles. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Ryan. This is Dave in Los Angeles. I'm a big fan of the show and a Patreon supporter. And I wanted to ask you, uh, I don't know if it's been covered yet, about this 12-volt battery issue that is seemed to be seemingly uh, causing a lot of hassle for people. Uh, I don't think a 12-volt battery should die within the first one to two years of owning a car. And there seems like there's been a lot of problems. And since I'm going on a road trip in my Model 3 this upcoming week, next week, I'm concerned that I'm going to get some kind of message saying my battery's dying or worse, not get a message. And uh, don't know if you addressed the issue yet, but I'd like to hear your opinion on it. Thank you. Again, the Ride the Lightning hotline callers on point last week and this week. Dave, your timing couldn't be better with this call. This has come up before, and Elon finally addressed it on Twitter this week. Now, someone tweeted at Elon saying, quote, We need a warning. If the 12-volt battery is going to die, this needs to be implemented into a future update. And Elon replied, quote, Couldn't agree more. Major software improvements are already in place to extend its life and more coming. So this will be a welcome improvement. I was very lucky that my 12 volt battery went at the service center as I got in my car to leave when I, after I got my uh, hardware three full self-driving computer upgrade. Most people are not that fortunate. Now it's not that you're gonna get stranded, it does give you a little bit of a warning, but then the warning doesn't really give you a ton of information. Tom from Phoenix knows this pain all too well from the story that he called in with about getting stuck in another state while on a road trip, and this happened to him, uh, played that was that's that call was from I think three four weeks ago. So really glad to see Elon and the team at Tesla uh, addressing the 12 volt battery issue, knowing that it's something that has had, that has uh, bit a number of Tesla owners in an unfortunate way. And the final story I wanted to do for you this week, for you Model Y owners, the Model Y Gemini Wheel Cap Kit is now available on shop.tesla.com, the Tesla online store. If you've got a Model Y with the stock 19-inch wheels and you happen to like the look of the wheels better without those aero covers on them, 
Tesla now offers a $50 kit that you can buy to clean up that aero uh, cap free look a little bit. The description from the Tesla online store says, for drivers who want to display the visually striking design hidden under the Gemini wheel cap. The Gemini wheel cap kit provides a clean, eye-catching and sporty look. Includes four Tesla logo wheel caps, 20 wheel lug caps, and one lug nut cover puller. So uh, I have to say, I'm surprised it took Tesla this long to get this out, considering that the Y has been available for six months. But uh, regardless, it's I'm glad to see this because they do have one for the same $50 price for the Model 3 and its default 18 inch aero wheels and the, the aero cap cover there. And I have to say, I see a lot of Model 3 owners out there who have picked up that kit and are running without the Aero cap wheel cover. I wonder if there are going to be plenty of Model Y owners who do the same, or if uh, the Y owners are going to be more content to just leave things as is, because you know it can be a little bit of a different mindset with a crossover SUV versus a little bit of a sportier sedan. So check it out if you're interested, shop.tesla.com. Personally, while we're just on the subject of Model Y wheels, I really like the 20 inch induction wheels on the Y. In fact, I would say I personally, wheels are very subjective of course, I think I like the 20 inch inductions even more than the 21 inch Uber turbines that are on the Performance Model Y, and I definitely like them a lot more than the 18, excuse me, 19 inch Geminis. Uh, if I were getting a Y, if I were if I were going Y shopping, I think I would want the 20s. Although, again, it's always just just so uh, people are aware, it the 19s the the there is a distinct advantage a fine a big financial advantage to going that way because not only do you not have to pay anything to get the those wheels they come standard the if you want the 20 inch inductions it'll cost you so you save money there. Plus, the tires last longer, the 19s will last longer than the 20s, and uh, they'll be cheaper to replace, and you get your best watt-hour per mile efficiency, aka you get better range on the 19s than on the 20s or on the 21s. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a style thing. You're choosing some style. You're sacrificing some... Uh, range for improved style should you choose the 20s or 21s. But now uh, you at least have two style choices if you've got those default 19 inch Gemini wheels on your Y. You can choose aero cap on or aero cap off and grab the Gemini wheel cap kit. All right, that's everything I have for you in the world of Tesla news this week. Stay tuned for this quick word from Teslab, and then I'll be right back with a bunch more of your awesome Ride the Lightning Hotline phone calls right after this. All September long, Ride the Lightning is sponsored by Teslab. Teslab is an incredibly useful app that complements your Tesla ownership experience by helping you see and understand exactly how your vehicle is performing well beyond what the car shows you. I've been using it myself, and think of it as a fitness tracker for your car, kind of like a Tesla version of a Fitbit or an Apple Watch. You can get real-world range estimates in real time. You can monitor charge rates at superchargers to make sure you're getting all the juice you're supposed to. You can rate the superchargers and see other users' ratings, including crowdsourced information about stuff like nearby food options and clean bathrooms. The creators of Teslab have even gamified it if you're interested in that aspect of it, offering friendly competitions with other Teslab users in your area for things like, say, who's driven the most efficiently that day or who's visited the most superchargers in a day, for example. Best of all, you can export your data for your further knowledge, records, and even for your business accounting purposes. All this information and a lot more is available with Teslab, which you can get on the App Store and Google Play. Learn more and sign up at teslab.app slash RTL. The app is free to use for life, but you can upgrade to a pro account for the price of a cup of coffee and get way more out of it. 
Check it out. That's tezlab.app slash RTL, T-E-Z-L-A-B dot A-P-P slash RTL. Welcome to the Ride the Lightning Hotline. Your questions, your comments, your discussion topics. If you've got any on your mind, I would absolutely love to hear from you. And you can call in in one of two easy ways. Either use your smartphone's built-in voice recording software, record your question, comment, or discussion topic. Please try to keep it to 90 seconds or less. And then email that file to me at teslapodcast at gmail.com. Or you can take that same call and just leave a message on the Ride the Lightning hotline. You dial in. It's toll-free. It's easy. It's free. 1-888-989-8752. That number again, 1-888-989-TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, hey, that's me, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they are special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. If you'd like to learn more, visit lifeonrecord.com. Our first caller this week, Matthew from Georgia. Go ahead, Matthew. Hey, Ryan and Tesla family. Matthew here from Georgia once again. By the time you are uh, reading this aloud, um, I will be exactly one week away from taking delivery of my Model 3 uh, on September 20th. And so I wanted to know, Ryan, could you walk me through any information you may have about the new delivery experience that is touchless and also... um, Anything I should be looking for um, as I walk around the car before I leave the dealership. Um, Everyone have a fantastic week. I know I will. uh, And congratulations to all the new fellow owners out there. Uh, I'll see you on the road. Thank you. Hey, Matthew, congratulations on your Model 3. Now, I may have missed you since today, as of this is when the show publishes. Today is your day, September 20th. But maybe, maybe I'll catch you in the morning before your delivery appointment. Maybe you'll still hear this. So anyway, the biggest thing is to just carefully walk around the car, take your time, and document any issues you see very specifically, and I cannot stress this part enough, with pictures. I would recommend bringing a delivery checklist with you to the pickup to help uh, just help give your brain one less thing to have to remember You'd have everything written down of of things to check. I used, I think I've mentioned this before, I used Tesla checklists dot, excuse me, I think I mispronounced that, teslachecklists.com. There we go. It was free at the time, but now it's a $5 app. So now the the cool part about that, you get it right on your phone and you can check things off as you go. I want to mention I'm not affiliated with them in any way, just for transparency. But when I went to look them up uh, for to, to respond to Matthew's call, I found that they are now a $5 paid thing. But in any case, if you don't want to pay for that one, there are other things that you can Google and maybe just print out if you like. Uh, you've got some options. That's the good news. So after your delivery, once you've documented anything that isn't up to standard, you can make an appointment in your Tesla app for service, a service appointment, and just list all of the issues that you find along with the corresponding photos in the notes section, the app, it's all built in, it's very easy to do that. And Tesla will honor those and get you taken care of if it's in the first 72 hours. That's the thing, you have to get it right away, which for reasons you can understand, right? They don't want people coming in like a week or two later, like, oh, there's a scratch on my car when, you know, in reality that could have happened after a delivery. So anyway, uh, the point is, I don't want to freak you out. It's, it's car's going to be great. Enjoy the car, and I hope you drive it in good health for many, many years and many thousands of miles. Good luck today, Matthew. Chris in Arizona is next. You're on the air, Chris. Hey, Ryan. This is Chris out here in hot, hot Arizona. We had this year a record-breaking summer, over 50 days of 110 degrees or more. Uh, which is pretty dang hot. What is that, like 45, 46 Celsius uh, for those who aren't in the United States or use Fahrenheit? Anyway, um, and I don't know about you or others, but I've accidentally hit the seat heater button on my Tesla on a number of occasions. I know it's my fault. I'm clumsy. I reached down to change the fan or the temperature, and I accidentally hit the seat heater for my passenger or for myself, and you don't realize it until you start to cook. 
And um, I wonder every time I do that, why are they on the main screen? Why aren't they just in the climate screen? Why do I have to have the defroster uh, buttons and the seat heater buttons on my main screen? I know it'd be cool if I could configure it and have what I want on there, because I know there's people in cold, cold climates who probably use it every day. Or why isn't it just a part of the driver profile settings? You could have a winter setting and a summer setting, and based on the temperature in the car and the temperature outside, maybe it automatically puts the seat heaters on or automatically doesn't have the seat heaters on, or maybe even asks you, are you sure you want to hit the seat heater, um, you know, so that you don't start cooking at 115 degrees when you're actually trying to cool the car down. Anyway, it's just a little gripe of mine no big deal my car has a hundred and thousand miles and 40 miles i think as of this morning and just love it it's perfect and i'm going to keep it for a long time so uh thanks for the podcast and uh, talk to you soon hey chris well another caller brought this up not too long ago and i have to say i can't disagree with either one of you it is really valuable screen real estate down there in that bottom row and it sure would be nice to have some choices for which controls you would like to put in that prime spot. So here's hoping that Tesla is up for giving that as an option at some point down the way. I mean, after all, a lot of Tesla's engineers are in California, and here we don't particularly need the seat heaters, at least specifically here in the Bay Area, which is where Tesla is. We don't need the seat heaters particularly often ourselves, so... Thanks so much for calling in, Chris. I'm going to go now to Pete from Perth, responding to Andrew in Africa. Welcome to the alliteration corner of, uh, of Ride the Lightning this week, which I love as a, as a journalism uh, degree holder and, a, and a, uh, a words guy and editor. So Pete from Perth responding to Andrew in Africa, who had called in about owning an electric vehicle in a place where there is very little charging infrastructure. Go ahead, Pete. Good day, Ryan. My name is Pete Petrovsky, long-time listener, first-time caller. I'm calling in regards to Andrew's question regarding owning a Tesla in Mozambique, Africa, where I understand there is little, if any, public charging infrastructure. We live in Perth, Western Australia, where we currently have only one supercharger in the whole of our state, which, by the way, is four times the size of Texas. Our claim to fame here is that our supercharger is the world's loneliest, being 2,700 kilometres or 1,700 miles away from its nearest cousin in Adelaide, South Australia. In fact, to the best of my knowledge, the Eaton supercharger, which is 110 miles from Perth, the capital city here in WA, is the only charger of any kind in the whole of our state which is faster than 50 kilowatts. But despite this lack of EV chargers, We've been an all-EV family for four and a half years now. We own a Model 3 Performance and a Volt. What I would say to Andrew is that when we bought our EVs, we soon discovered that our fueling habits had changed because with an ice car, it's quite inconvenient to have to go out of your way to fuel up at a gas station, which may take five or ten minutes, but to charge an EV, you literally just plug the cable in, which <laughs> takes half a second. So we just got used to plugging our cars in every night and just topping up the battery, which means that even, even if we only charge to, say, 80%, we still have 400 kilometers or 250 miles of range ready to go each and every morning. As the average person in Australia drives 40 kilometers or 25 miles a day, it's obviously more than enough. So the only time that an EV would make things impossible is on longer road trips, in which case we ensure that we carry extension cords and all, all the possible plugs for our UMC and we plan our journey around existing power points and always have a plan B just in case we can't charge where we're expecting to. I'm not sure what the grid is like in Mozambique, but almost every home, every business, in fact, almost every gas station should have an electrical outlet, which you may be able to use just as a worst case scenario. Furthermore, you may be able to opt in for the solar canopy to add 50 miles a day to your Cybertruck. In fact, going by Elon's tweets, there may even be solar wings to add even more range. If all else fails, however, and those road trips aren't going to be that frequent anyway, you could just hire an ICE car for those two or three occasions each year and enjoy your awesome Cybertruck at all the other times. Ryan, thank you so much for putting on a great show each and every week. You are a real asset to the whole Tesla community. All the best, Pete. 
Pete, thank you very much for sharing your experience. A lot of great advice in there. I appreciate your call, and also thank you very much for your kind words. I want to give an additional shout out to Thanos from Greece as well, who also called in with this. He recommended using PlugShare, which is a great app, and trying to get any other EV owners in Mozambique that you happen to meet either out in the real world or online to use PlugShare as well in order to create a network for each other. So thank you, Pete, uh, Pete, and thank you, Thanos. Those were both great, constructive, helpful calls. Let's go back to Arizona. Talk to Eddie from Phoenix. Hey, Ryan, this is Eddie from Phoenix. Uh, I had a question about the two most recent updates for the, uh, I guess it's for everybody, but I have it, my Model 3. Um, I believe the first one was 2020.36, and then the most recent one was uh, 2020.36.10. And this is in regards to um, the way that the map looks on city streets now. Um, I don't have it on satellite. I just have it on the traditional map with the traffic on. And I've noticed that the roads look much more uh, topographically correct and they seem to be much more zoomed in when you're on normal like city roads than before. And another thing I noticed is that the uh, stoplights appear on the map um, instead of just appearing on the like driving visualization on the, on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, I just wanted to see if you had any update on that because it's not noted in any of the updates that I know, um, and I thought that it had gone away, and apparently it hasn't. So I'll send you a picture of my screen, too, just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. Thank you very much, and talk to you soon. To the best of my knowledge, Eddie, those navigation updates are separate from the car software updates. In fact, if you go into the software menu in the car, you will see a navigation data version number that's separate from your car's firmware version number. But I agree, though. Totally agree with you. It is very good to see that get better and better. Appreciate your call. Uh, staying in Arizona, look at three Arizona callers this week. I like that. Will from Phoenix is up next to talk about a, a little fun thing he found in his Model S. Go ahead, Will. Hey, Ryan. Will from Phoenix here. Longtime listener. I uh, wanted to share something with uh, your listeners about my 2015 Tesla Model S. It's an older one, but uh, every day I discover new things about it. One of the big complaints about Teslas has always been about storage compartments. I recently just discovered this, that on the front driver's seat and front passenger seat, near the front where your knees rest, there is a small pocket where you can put your insurance, your uh, registration, any small documents on both seats. So it's like a little map pocket. Uh, just thought it would be interesting to share with you guys. Uh, Love everything about your show and continue all the good work. Thanks. Thank you, Will. I have to say, I was not aware of this. Of course, I'm not a Model S owner, so I always there, there's plenty about uh, the S and the X that I have yet to discover since I'm not with them every day. But still, I very much appreciate you calling in with this in case other Model S owners out there might happen to be surprised by it too. Now, what I definitely do know about the S from having spent time in a few of them over the years, starting with my cousin Pat's early 2013 first-generation Model S, I know that there have been at least three seat revisions, front seat revisions, in the Model S over the years. So what you have to say there might not apply to all Model S owners, but uh, I guarantee everybody that's got an S, if they didn't already know that, will now go check their seats after listening to this. Thank you for passing that along. Super appreciate it. And one more call this week going out to Cameron in Waco. You're on the air, Cameron. Hey, Ryan. Cameron here from Waco. Just responding to a caller from a couple weeks ago about the panic button. I wonder if a good solution would, for that would be if Tesla were to develop a separate, an entirely separate phone app that's specifically just a panic button. So if you click the app, it'll cause the panic button to go off. And uh, or maybe two clicks would cause the panic button to go off, and then you could have a Siri shortcut, you know, hey Siri, panic button, or something like that. So that'd be a good solution. Uh, hopefully, someone at Tesla is listening, 
and maybe that'll help help someone out. All right, love the show. Bye bye. I like that, Cameron. I like that. I wonder if a widget might be easier, something that just lived on your phone's home screen or could be pulled down with one swipe, uh, one swipe down from the top. But I like your idea and I really like your thought process here, Cameron. Thank you so much for calling in. And thanks to all of you who took the time to call in uh, over the last week or so. Keep them coming. I would love to hear from you. Uh, there's going to be plenty to chat about because next week is battery day. Yes, very excited to go see what Tesla is cooking up in the realm of battery advancement, battery chemistry, battery longevity, et cetera, et cetera. So dial me up anytime with whatever is on your mind that is Tesla related. I gave you the call in info at the top of this segment. But again, you can always email your question in if you're recording it on your phone teslapodcast at gmail.com, or you can call and just leave a message, 1-888-989-8752. Be right back with your pro tip of the week and a few other things right after this. This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Sierra 117. You're listening to Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast. You know, that Cybertruck looks a lot like a warthog, doesn't it? Master Chief, out. I want to tell you what's going on with my car these days. Uh, I wanted to bring up phantom braking on autopilot. This is a thing that's been around a while. It had never really affected me much. It had barely ever happened. But I have to say, I have been getting bit by it a lot more recently. It has been happening to me fairly frequently. Now, I've been very fortunate that each time this has happened, first of all, it's like it's like an instant heart attack because the car's just, you're going along at 70 plus miles an hour and the car just grabs the brakes on you uh, for, you know, completely unexpectedly. I've been very fortunate that I have not had anyone right behind me any time this has happened. It's also been happening to me on roads that I drive on all the time where I've never had an issue with it before. So I know I'm not the only one who's dealt with phantom braking. I am curious if it's been happening more to anyone else recently or, or what. I, I mean, I don't have any explanation for it. I don't know if there is any explanation for it. The, you know, I've seen words about how it, it tends to happen, and I have seen this, at underpasses. Where with with the shadow and the light change that something happens and confuses the cameras and it hits the brakes thinking that the, the shadow uh, is, I guess, an object. But I've also had it happen not at underpasses. So I'm not sure what the deal is, but it's I've definitely noticed an uptick with it and I don't like it. It does not make me feel good. It does. It, it just uh, lowers my confidence in autopilot. So if you've got an autopilot phantom braking situation as well, or if, if you've kind of observed a change in that, in that behavior and the frequency of that behavior, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, call me, whatever you want to do. All right. Uh, at the, again, ongoing suggestion of Stefan from Monterey in my video game life by day, I'm lucky to play and come across many great games. So here in the ongoing uh, COVID-related work from home for a lot of folks, I thought I'd give you another video game recommendation if you're spending more time at home than you had been before. And this one is a brand new release for the Nintendo Switch, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. It is a limited time offering in celebration of the 35th anniversary of the original Mario game. I think the limited time offering is patently ridiculous. There's just no reason to do that. Let people buy it in a year. If they get a Switch in a year, it just seems ridiculous to me. But anyway, I say that because if you do want to get it, you've got until March to purchase it. Uh, it's been selling out everywhere as a physical game cartridge, but you can download it digitally from the Nintendo eShop. But I will tell you, I love it. It's it's three classic 3D Mario games from the 3D era. So it's Super Mario 64, which is a, regarded as a legendary game. I actually have, that's the one I haven't played, 
which I know will will make some of you uh, drop your jaw in disgust. What? How have you not played Super Mario 64? I was PC gaming back then, but uh, so I never, I just never played 64. So I'm looking forward to giving it, giving it a try here. It's also got the successor to 64, which was the Nintendo GameCube's Super Mario Sunshine, which is a, a big favorite of mine. I always loved that game. And then it's got from the Nintendo Wii, the the game that is my favorite of the 3D Marios. Even though Odyssey is great, which is the the newest one for Switch, but I think uh, for me, probably the second greatest Super Mario game of all time, I would put Super Mario Brothers three first. But Super Mario Galaxy is the third 3D Mario game that rounds out this collection. So give that a look if you are a Super Mario fan, and maybe you either have like me, maybe missed one or more of those three games over the years, or. You just want to revisit them because it's been a long, long time. So there you go. Next up, pro tip of the week. Let's get back to Tesla talk. Rob from the UK is our pro tipper. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Ryan. It's Rob again from the UK. Um, I've just got a small tip that you may deem appropriate to make it onto your pro tip segment. I don't know. Um, But I've discovered recently that uh, when the car is in park and you've got the graphic of the car... Um, you don't actually have to exactly hit the open button to open the boot or the fruit or frunk, I think as you call it, in America. Um, you can actually just hit the actual area of the car. So you can hit the boot area, you can hit the front boot area, um, or you can even hit the area of the car where the charging point is. So... Yeah, it's a small thing, but um, when you're in a bit of a hurry and you're rushing to get out of the car and open the boot, um, you can just hit the car. Um, you don't actually exactly have to hit the uh, the open button. Um, small thing, but yeah, I found it helpful. Um, didn't realise it did that. Um, and then I've got one more thing, which isn't a pro tip at all. It's actual. It's a bug, I think, in the in the car. You can cut this bit out if you like. But um, just thought you might find it interesting. The uh, indicators when you're indicating in one direction and then you push the indicator all the way in the other direction well my indicator just stops it doesn't start indicating in the other direction which um for most people might not be an issue but um certainly in the uk we've got a lot of roundabouts so a lot of the time you're indicating one way and you want to indicate straight away the other way and the indicator just cancels and um i had all the updates and i thought somebody would fix it one day but uh yeah, I don't know whether it's just my car. I doubt it. Um, but yeah, just thought that was interesting as well. Okay, cheers, Ryan. Bye. Thank you, Robert. That's a really good one. I love that the Tesla team made it so that you can touch the areas of the car render itself that you want to open. And yeah, that turn signal thing, I guess that's both a bug and a feature unique to those turn signals. Uh, I appreciate your call and remind anybody out there If you've got a pro tip of the week, something interesting about your car that's not super obvious that you'd like to share with your fellow Tesla owners and enthusiasts, call in with it. You can call in the same way that you do a regular hotline call. I gave you that a couple times earlier in the episode. All right, before I go, I want to mention a few friends of the podcast. The snap plate for all four Tesla vehicles, S3, X, and Y, Get yours at livingtesla.com slash RTL. Don't forget the slash RTL. That is the front license plate bracket for people like me that hate front license plates. Goes on and off in seconds, securely, paint safe, grill safe, radiator safe, autopilot safe. Check it out, livingtesla.com slash RTL. Abstractocean.com with the coupon code RTL podcast as all one word, RTL podcast. Your home for many, many wonderful Tesla accessories, including the uh, vinyl wrap kits for the center console in your three or Y to get rid of the uh, aforementioned piano black glossy finish that I am not a super big fan of that tends to fingerprint and scratch. There's also a custom fit tempered glass screen protector for the three and the Y, There are lighting kits of different colors and brightnesses, all kinds of great stuff. Just check them out. Give them a browse, abstractocean.com, and that coupon code RTLpodcast will get you 15% off of your first order 
with Abstract Ocean. Meanwhile, Immaculate Reflections is uh, out here in the Bay Area doing awesome detailing work. It's uh, totally touchless. It's a, he's, he's a very sanitary person. It's, you should see he's got a, an apparatus in his shop that uh, and it's a home, home brew rigged thing he made that sucks the dust particles out of the air. That's how clean Jeff is. He takes it very seriously. So uh, you are, should feel comfortable to swing by, drop your car off if you're in or going to be in the Bay Area. Get some awesome detailing work, whether it's paint correction, paint protection film, ceramic coating, etc. Mention that you are a Ride the Lightning listener and there is a discount waiting for you when you uh, share that wonderful information with Jeff. Learn more and book with him at his website, which is irdetailing.com. Meanwhile, get your dash cam all taken care of at puretesla.com slash RTL. Again, don't forget the slash RTL if you uh, need it. I mean, it's just a one-stop shop. They even ship free anywhere in the U.S., it comes formatted and ready to go right into the package. Just plug it straight into your car and you're done. There's the 128 gigabyte kit that I'm using. That's $49. $69 to step up to the 256 gigabyte kit. PureTesla.com slash RTL. And then, of course, my friends at Jada. They've got the wireless charging pad for all but the newest Model 3s, as well as the USB hub for both the Model 3 and the Model Y. Get yourself that, that latter product. will get you some extra USB ports, including some extra USB-C ports. So if you're interested in either or both of those products, please go to this affiliate link, which is getjada.com slash R-E-F slash eight. And Jada spelled J-E-D-A there. And don't forget the coupon code Ride the Lightning. All one word. Ride the lightning. Make sure you spell lightning correctly. And that should be good for $10 off of your purchase. Finally, I'll just quickly mention the Patreon. Uh, if you have been listening for some time, you know that I have uh, delivered week in and week out for 268 straight weeks here. I take a lot of pride in making sure that this podcast is as professional as possible, as thoroughly researched and accurate as possible, and hopefully even a little bit entertaining as well. So if uh, at some point you feel that you are willing and able in these uncertain times to support my efforts of doing this podcast, it'll always be voluntary. But if you are uh, willing and able to do so, I would sincerely appreciate your support. You can find uh, all of that, that information on my Patreon page, which is found at patreon.com slash tesla podcast and patreon is spelled p-a-t-r-e-o-n if you've not already subscribed to the podcast that's a free thing that you just do with any of the major podcast services so that the show pushes out to you each week rather than you having to remember to go download it or stream it and I'm on pretty much all the major podcast services, Apple Podcasts, which is uh, what the overwhelming majority of people seem to use. But there's also Google Podcasts. I'm on there. I'm on Stitcher. I'm on Spotify. I'm on TuneIn, which is in your Tesla. And I'm also on YouTube just as an audio only feed. There's no video. But if you do want to listen on YouTube, just search Ride the Lightning Tesla and my channel will pop right up and you can easily subscribe to it. You can email me anytime about whatever in the world of Tesla. My email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter or Instagram, both at the same handle, DMC underscore Ryan, in an homage to my original dream car that I was so lucky to own for a long time, the DeLorean. And that will about wrap it up, other than saying thank you to the wonderful Patreon producers. These folks are not only supporting me on Patreon, they're doing so at the producer tier, which entitles them to early access to each week's episode, the monthly bonus episode, caller priority when they call in, and the shout out here at the end of each week's show. So I'll do that now. Thank you so much to Pete White, 
George Cassiopo, David Brander, Jonathan Wales, Alexi Heft, Logan Willis, Robert Miracle, Jason Chalukas, Joe Edgel, Tim Hyde, Lawton from Chicago, Peter Chalet, David Vakil, Ulrich Lassa, Luke A., Eric Randolph, David Nondahl, Jerry and Mary Smith, Lyle Austin, Joel Sapp, Dory and Steve Guberman, Daniel Grummer, Jeremy, Tesla Owners Taiwan, Jeremy Harris, Rob Brewer, Ron Lee, John Cody, Matthew Wright, Charlie Gillespie, Kaz Barnes, Neil Weaver, David Perella, Sunil Joseph, Dennis Peake, Will Stedman, E.V. Tricity UK, Stig Mickey Jensen, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, Richard Folkers, Trenton from Myrtle Beach, The Lydia Family, Michael Regal, Mark Eversoll, Ish, Chris Beach, Aaron Altschul, Steve Radspinner, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Seth Capello, Jamie Dalton, Noel and Lucy Murphy, my friend on Twitter, at Rodam, Hud Hassel, Nick and Tony, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, and John Schmidt. Thank you all so very much for your very generous and ongoing Patreon support. Well, that'll do it for me. Uh, technically, th- this is the last show of my 30s because <laughs> my birthday is not till the day the show releases, but I recorded it as always on Friday night. So I'm um, looking forward to a fun birthday weekend. I mean, I-, I can't believe I've been doing this show for five years and it's just been so much fun and I'm looking forward to doing it well into and maybe hopefully even through my 40s. If uh, God willing, if all goes well, Thank you very much for listening. Your time is extremely valuable, and I appreciate you giving me uh, or spending about an hour or so of it with me each and every week to hang out and chat about all things Tesla. This company is so much fun. The mission is so wonderful. And next week, friends, next week's episode should be really fun with Battery Day. I feel so privileged, so fortunate to be invited to get to go. I can't wait. And I will have that full first-hand on-site report for you from Battery Day and, of course, the shareholder meeting, which is part of that. So look for all of that in a very big, very special episode next week. Until then, happy electric motoring. I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make... It's, it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.